It's the Feel Good Flavor of Afternoon Delight Radio Show here on WRVS 89.9, your community voice. More of your music is on the way, but now it's time for conversations with the Chancellor. And, of course, I'm joined by the Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University, Dr. Carrie Dixon. Chancellor Dixon, welcome to your show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, listen, uh, we're going to jump right into it because we have so much to get into. First of all, let's just start with some of the great recognition that the university is receiving. Just last month, uh, we received word that publication U.S. News and World Report ranked ECSU as the number three top public school in the regional college south. Now, we've been on this list before, uh, but it's always great to be recognized on these college lists that come out. Exactly. The visibility definitely speaks volumes. And um, it also is just a good place to be where people are recognizing us for the great work that we're doing and the excellent education that our students receive And, um, you know, being an HBCU, being part of the UNC system, those are just great reasons why we should be celebrated. So I'm glad that we're being recognized at the national level. And being recognized like this really helps out when we talk about recruiting and bringing students in and the visibility of the university. Many people read these lists and it's just always great for us to be high up there on them. Yes, exactly. And it does it does uh, trigger people to want to know more, mm-hmm. want to learn more. And um, so we'll see, uh, you know, people calling and saying, can I have a tour? And one thing that we're going to do this year is we are not going to have the two week turnaround for a tour. We're going to book tours immediately. And so um, within 24 hours. So that gets more people on campus, gets more people exposed. So we're really hoping that these rankings help just to make people more aware of what Elizabeth City State University has to offer. Yes. And if you want to see more about this story, you can find it online at newsroom.ecsu.edu. And again, Chancellor, when you talk about all the great recognition It gives prospective students more incentive to come to ECSU and choose this as their university for higher learning. Yet some may not know about North Carolina College Application Week, which is happening now through Friday. And this week you can apply to ECSU and have your application fee waived. Now, whenever you can save money, it's a good thing. And students really need to take advantage of this opportunity. Exactly. And College Application Week is a big deal across our entire state. And uh, when I worked at the UNC system office, it was actually part of my portfolio to oversee free application week across the state with all the institutions that were willing to waive their their admissions fee, applications fee uh, during this week. And so uh, this is an exciting time. And I'm happy to see that we are participating and there's a lot of interest around the schools that decided to waive the application fee this week. And so we're really pushing for uh, students to learn more about ECSU and apply this week. Like you said, the cost savings is there. And with NC Promise, what more can you ask for? (laughs) You got that right. Talk about a lot of savings. You can apply now online through Friday at 5 p.m. to take advantage of North Carolina College Application Week. You can learn more online at ecsu.edu slash admissions. You're listening to Conversations with the Chancellor. Clay Mercer here with Dr. Carrie Dixon, the Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University. And Chancellor, those students who apply and are accepted to ECSU can look forward to a new direction here at the university and part of a new strategic plan that will be presented to the ECSU Board of Trustees soon. Um, Yesterday, the plan was unveiled at the Strategic Plan Presentation and Feedback Forum. Um, With this forum, what were you hoping to accomplish? Well, you know, from the start, we wanted the community, our alumni, our stakeholders, our students, our faculty, our staff to really own this plan. And so yesterday was an opportunity for us to share where we are at this point. Um, in finalizing the plan. It's not finalized yet because we do want everyone to own it. We want everyone to have an opportunity to provide feedback. And so having that gathering yesterday really allowed us to do that. And we also had at the very end an opportunity for those who participated to uh, provide comments and any feedback. And so it turned out to be quite well. We had a nice um, number of people there, a Mm -hmm. good number of people. And, um, you know, so the feedback that we received, definitely we took to heart and we'll definitely take back to the steering committee as as other things to think about as we continue this process and finalizing our strategic plan. Well, I can't wait to see what comes from it. A lot of good feedback from the student staff and community members who attended. And you can learn more about yesterday's event on online at newsroom.ecsu.edu. Now, I've been looking forward to chat with you about this. Now, we talked about the installation celebration during our last show. That was, you know, a couple months ago, and Hurricane 
Jane Dorian had different plans for us at that time. Yes. <laughs> uh, several events were postponed and they were moved to October 10th through the 13th. And thankfully, no storms hindered those plans. And it was good to see your family and friends showing you love and support, especially during the installation ceremony. Uh, take us all back to that day, October 11th at the Fine Arts Center. What were your feelings going into that ceremony? Well, honestly, Clay, I was just happy there was no hurricane around. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take you back to September 6th. Uh, that was a very rough week for me because we had to really make some quick decisions um, yeah. that really uh, was dependent upon um, making sure that our students were safe yeah. and our community was safe during that time where we had the threat of Hurricane uh, Dorian coming our way. So canceling the installation was something I knew needed to be done because our students come first, this mm -hmm. community comes first, and we could celebrate later. And so the celebration uh, was postponed to October 11th, mm -hmm. and I have to say it was a beautiful day. The temperatures was right, the sun was out, and it was so nice to see family, friends, and community members come out and celebrate my installation. Yeah. And I wanted this to be about the community, mm -hmm. as I mentioned a while ago. And so we wanted just everyone to be able to participate. So the ball was absolutely beautiful. Um, we had so many people come out from the community, alumni, stakeholders, mm -hmm. faculty, staff, uh, there and everyone just looks so beautiful and was just really having a good time. Yeah. And that's really what I wanted. And so I told people who could not make it October 11th that, you know, I totally understood because this was nothing <laughs> that we had any control Correct. over. Mother Nature. And it's Mother Nature. Oof. You're right. And so uh, for those who were able to make it, it was a beautiful day. And so I, I was really pleased. Yeah, I want to go back to something you just said. You wanted to make this about the community, not about you. And with it being the installation celebration and ceremony for you to be installed as chancellor, why was that so important to you to make sure it was about the community? Well, I think it's so important because, you know, I see myself as the community's chancellor and this university mm -hmm. is so important to me. And um, I wanted everyone to know that they are so valued in this process. And often I've said and people have heard me say that this is not about me. This is not about I. This is about us. It's about we. It's about us doing this together. And so um, having the community be a part of the celebration was just a you know, continued step in the right direction. And so I was glad to see uh, everyone own this uh, celebration and be a part of it. And, you know, one thing that I said in my installation speech is this is the community's university mm -hmm. and the university is the community's. Right. And so, uh, you know, we really need to do this and be in on singing from the same sheet of music and doing uh, all the things that we can to work together and make sure that this institution uh, is thriving and that is sustainable for the future. Yeah, I love that. And it can be done once it was done and you had a chance to sit down and reflect on the celebration. Did you have a sense of the true impact you have not only on the university, but the community as a whole? Well, you know, I, I see the progress and I'm very pleased with the progress that I see. But more importantly, one thing that I love is the feedback from everyone. Um, you know, sometimes you really can't tell how things are going unless you hear from the people. Right. And so the positive feedback I've heard, the energy I've witnessed, um, has has really spoke volumes for the direction that the university is going. So I greatly appreciate people telling me, you know, what's working, um, you know, what's not working and giving me an opportunity to talk about, you know, some of the things that we're doing to improve. Um, but, you know, overall, it's just good to hear people uh, excited and see and that they see the progress. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. I mean, my students tell me I always say I love I want them to love where they live and mm -hmm. learn. And so um, I want them to love ECSU just as much as the alumni, just as much as I do and everyone else. Yeah, I noticed one of your missions was bringing that Viking pride back to the students, back to the, the campus, you know, exactly. the, the blue, the Viking blue. And you wanted to place it everywhere. And it, it does feel really, really good. So I think everybody is in agreement that you're doing a great, great job so far. Uh, speaking of excitement, I, I know your parents were in attendance and yes. they were sitting kind of like front row. And I know they were excited, too. I, I wonder what was going through their minds when they saw you on the stage taking the reins as chancellor of ECSU? Well, they were very proud. They were very excited. They love the Viking family. Uh, I, the, everyone that they have met um, on <laughs> campus, alumni and the community, they have just fallen in love. And, and you'll see them out with their ECSU 
jackets and and t-shirts on everywhere and my dad he got so upset because he thought he misplaced his ecsu hat and i didn't know what i was going to do but one of the um police uh from elizabeth city um actually found his hat and gave it to him so so you know that's how passionate they are Mm -hmm. and to see their firstborn daughter my um i'm the oldest daughter Um, To see me up there, I think, you know, really warmed their hearts. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandma was there and my godmother. And so people that um, have really instilled a lot in me uh, were there to share this great moment. Um, My mother-in-law. Um, and so it, it was a really good time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, speaking of your parents, I, I think they have a future in radio. I mean, they <laughs> called up and, you know, they did the drop. They did they did the audio for you to congratulate you. I don't even know if you really listened no, to it I yet. No, I didn't hear but it. I didn't hear it. They did an outstanding job. They scripted it and they they, they voiced it very well. I, I'm wondering, can we find a place for them here on the radio station? Oh, they definitely. Did? They would love that. They would <laughs> love it. <laughs> outstanding. Listen, if you want to see more from the installation celebration, of course, you can find Find it all online at ecsu.edu. It's Conversations with the Chancellor, Clay Mercer here with Chancellor Dixon. And last month, I also noticed a large U.S. Coast Guard helicopter that was in the air and then it landed on the softball field. And uh, I'm sure it had something to do with the Coast Guard HBCU Training and Leadership Summit. Uh, it was the second annual summit, I believe. Tell the listeners about this event and how ECSU became a part of it. So this was a very exciting event for us. So last year was the first year that the Coast Guard held this HBCU summit, Mm -hmm. but they held it at Norfolk State University. So Norfolk State was uh, the first to host Mm -hmm. the Coast Guard there. And so I attended that um, summit on Norfolk State's campus and was very impressed with what I saw. And so when they were talking about, okay, where do we go from here? They, they tease me now, but they say I immediately raised my hand and said <laughs> Elizabeth City State <laughs> that's University. Right, yes. So that's how we ended up uh, being the host this year. Mm-hmm. And when I say they had a wonderful time, um, we exposed them to the entire campus, our aviation program, and they absolutely loved it. And it speaks volumes to the partnership mm-hmm. that we are trying to be very intentional and Admiral Keith Smith and I, from the very start, when we first met, we said, if we're going to have a partnership, we're going to be intentional about it. It's not just going to be words on paper. It's going to be words with action behind it. And so I was very pleased um, with the uh, gathering that we had here on campus to celebrate the relationship that we have with the Coast Guard and their relationship with all HBCUs that were uh, participating. And so I have to give credit to Tim Freeman, our director of military Mm -hmm. affairs here at ECSU. He and Commander Warren Judge, Mm -hmm. um, ECSU alum, also in the Coast Guard. They both were really instrumental in pulling it uh, all together logistically and making sure that it went well for everyone and everyone had a great experience. You know, you brought up the conversation about uh, the relationship we have with the Coast Guard. And it seems like it's just getting stronger and stronger Mm -hmm. as days and months go by. How vital Uh, is that relationship for us to continue to work together? Well, it's very vital because, um, you know, in in our close proximity that we have and and just the fact that a lot of our students leave um, ECSU after obtaining their degree and they join the Coast Guard Mm -hmm. through their C-SPY program and and other opportunities of of becoming a part of the Coast Guard. And we have some very notable, distinguished alums uh, who have done quite well. And uh, Commander Warren Judge is one. Um, that is very active still on the campus, Mm -hmm. but also um, in the Coast Guard as an officer. So we're just very uh, pleased with our relationship that we have with the Coast Guard. Um, We're also very pleased with our relationship we have with the U.S. Army because we do have uh, Army ROTC on our campus. And so we're very pleased uh, with the work and programming that they're offering our students as well. So just creating a military-friendly campus uh, is one of my priorities and making sure that our military veterans uh, uh, and are able to come to ECSU and get what they need and also have the infrastructure here to support them. Yeah, It's Conversations with the Chancellor here on WRVS 89.9, your community voice. Now, Chancellor, everyone is still raving about ECSU Homecoming 2019. I have to talk about it. It was a great week of festivities. And what are some of your thoughts on the annual get together that we have here on oh, campus? Oh, it was absolutely unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, the energy, the number of alumni that came out, community members that came out, 
the stadium Saturday yeah. was packed. Oh it was wonderful to see. <laughs> wonderful to see. And I think it sent a strong message to our student athletes, mm-hmm. our football players. They went out there. They played hard. Um, they won. Yeah. And, you know, it really gave a great boost of energy in that entire environment. But the uh, weekend was it was full of activities it and was. events all over campus. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it was just good to interact with the alumni and to see them happy yes. and see them excited. <laughs> yes. And they were commenting on the beautification of the campus mm-hmm. and they were, you know, taking tours and things and telling me about what they saw. And so it was really good to have them engaged and energized and just very excited about ECSU and that's what I want I want everyone to be very excited I want our alumni to come back come home and say wow this Mm -hmm. is great and let's continue to invest and uh, provide resources donations to the institution Mm -hmm. to help other students come and other students to have the same type of experiences they had Mm -hmm. when they were students and so I saw a lot of that I heard a lot of it I had the alumni reception over to my residence um, on Friday from three to five yeah. And it was just absolutely wonderful. Wow. And you talk about the interactions with the alumni, and it seems like everyone enjoyed the week of festivities, including everything that took place on the weekend. And you talked a little bit about the feedback the alumni gave you. Um, how do you use that feedback to better the university? Well, I use that feedback. I take it to heart. Um, I love when people give me feedback, both positive and negative, but I also ask people to be patient. Um, because we are making great progress here at ECSU, but there's still a lot to do. Mm -hmm. So this is not the end all. You know, there's still a lot to do. We've made significant progress in the last 16 months. Um, Some call it miraculous. I call it favor. And we have just been able to do things that, you know, some people didn't believe we could do. And um, so I'm very pleased with the progress we're making, but I'm not satisfied yet. Mm Um, I want to see us continue to grow. I want to see us continue to improve um, operationally and also improve um, as far as who we are as an institution and how we stand as a constituent institution within the University of North Carolina. And we have a lot of great opportunity to do that. We just got to keep the energy and the momentum going. Yeah. Conversations with the Chancellor here on WRVS 89.9. And Chancellor, there were several people I spoke to who were excited to see the renovations over at Williams Hall Gymnasium. Uh, that, that was it, it, new paint, new color, new new floor. It just looks really, really good in there. Uh, and I hear there are more renovations and changes to come possibly to the campus can you let us in on any uh, future developments that may be happening real soon that people can see when they come on campus? Well, I am so excited about Williams Hall. Yeah. <laughs> when um, And, you know, I from the time my husband and I walked the campus, and and I'll never forget, because mm-hmm. this is one of my Randy Jones, is uh, one of my Randy Jones stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but my husband and I came over to Williams Hall, and that was the first day we met Randy Jones. And Randy took us through the gym. He took us through um, Williams Hall and he showed us things that needed improvement. And he was very passionate about improvements in Williams Hall Mm -hmm. gym. Um, But he also showed us met we met faculty. We met um, some other, you know, saw some other areas that needed improvement Mm -hmm. in Williams Hall. And so I've been able to find some resources to do those things. Um, We're not done yet. But we've made great strides in improving um, Williams Hall, yeah. both in the classroom area as well as the gym. The gym is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it is. It and is. even I was amazed. I didn't want to see it until they were done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I, I wanted to see the end product. But I know what it looked like before. Mm-hmm. So to walk in there and to see how nice that gym looks now. It is just absolutely amazing. And to see how the smiles on the students' faces when Mm -hmm. they walked in, um, it was just amazing to see and just very satisfying uh, from the standpoint of knowing that the students realize that we can do better and we will do better. Mm -hmm. And so I was very happy to see the end result. But if you haven't seen it, listeners, you need to come see Williams Hall because Williams Hall looks very good. It really does. I'm going to tell you right now, and Randy would agree with me. I played ball here at the university, and we had practice sessions over at Williams Hall. It looks so much better now than even when I played here. It looks phenomenal. So great job on that, and I think it looks good. If you haven't seen the pictures, you can find all of this online at ecsu.edu. Pictures and so much more about the university is always there. Well, we've come to an end of 
of another great edition of Conversations with the Chancellor. And you know what that means. It's time for me to turn my microphone off. And Chancellor, I'll let you speak to the listeners. Whatever's on your mind, now is your time. Well, sure. Uh, Clay, one thing I do want to finish answering your question there. Uh, There are um, plans for improvement in other areas of the campus. And one thing that we really need to do is update our master plan. Uh, for the entire campus because that hasn't been updated in 15 years. And so that master plan would give us guidance on areas that we need to improve in regards to um, navigating through the campus, street names and other things that could be improved. But as far as our buildings, really taking a clear assessment of what ne- what's needed as far as renovations of buildings in place. Um, there will be a demolish. Uh, there be- will be a couple of buildings that will be demolished on the campus that are just uninhabitable right now. And so um, there's a lot of change that's going to occur. We did last week receive $2 million from the UNC Board of Governors for repair and renovations, which is great. Um, And so we're going to be using that money to do a lot of a lot more repair and renovations. And and so, you know, I think we're definitely looking um, and, and making great strides in the right direction. So to our listeners, I just say, you know, be patient with us. Um, I appreciate your continued support and advocacy of the university. We need each and every one, um, you know, cheering, rooting us on, being champions of ECSU, because this university means so much to Northeastern North Carolina. And I can't imagine what it would be like if this university was not here. And so with that said, we need all the support we can get. We need everyone rooting for We need everyone wearing ECSU attire, gear, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to refer to it as, your T-shirts, your jackets, your hats, um, and just letting everyone know that ECSU is thriving. We're here to stay. And also in November, we're going to have the UNC Board of Governors on campus, and they have not been on campus since the early 90s. Mm. And so this is huge for the entire city as well as ECSU. And the meetings are open to the public. And just turning out to show your support for ECSU, I think is huge and it speaks volumes. And so we're looking to host them on November 14th and 15th on our campus. And, um, you know, I just say whatever you can do, continue to champion this great institution and wave our flag and and participate through uh, your through athletics and continue to donate and and provide funding if you can to support the university and support student scholarships. So I greatly appreciate everyone and your continued support of ECSU and me. And um, I just pray that uh, things continue to move in the right direction and we all continue to have that same level of energy and momentum to really make some big statements about how important this university is and how important it is to the people and the citizens of North Carolina. As the chancellor of Elizabeth City State University, Dr. Kerry Dixon, chancellor, thank you so much for making this show happen. And I might not have a chance to say this to you, but happy Halloween to you and your family. Do you all put on costumes and get candy and stuff? Do y'all do all of that? Not as much because the girls are older now. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not cool for them to be in costumes. Yeah, it's not cool it. anymore. Um, <laughs> so not as much. We really don't uh, because they are older and they're just not into it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm sure, you know, happy Halloween to everyone out there that, that <laughs> does celebrate. And I hope you all have a very safe Halloween and have a good time, to, you know, no matter what you decide to do. Definitely. Thank you, Chancellor Dixon. And again, you can listen to Conversations with the Chancellor every fourth Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. And in case you missed any of the shows, you can go.